In the basement of UW-Madison Engineering Centers, an unusual project is taking shape. In a lot of classes, you're just kind of doing homework, but here we get to build something. What they're building is a one-of-a-kind robot. We've been working on it a little over a year. None of us knew how to build robots. And this robot is designed to do something very specific. You can move in any direction at any time. It's been a lot of work. It has not been easy. But if it works, it could change someone's life. I think that's probably why I got into engineering. If you're a biomedical engineer, the goal is to directly help someone. In this case, they want to help a man they've never met. Dr. Garrett Couples has traveled from Delaware to Wisconsin to learn more about what these students hope to do for him. Wow. They are putting their heart and soul into this project. It floors me. I mean, I don't know why, I, why me. All right, let's do it. His story really touched us when we heard about it. Garrett Couples was a born helper. There was never a doubt as to what Garrett was going to be. He had a Fisher Price stethoscope and medical kit. I think I wanted to be a doctor since I, I was two or three. I've enjoyed helping people. While he was in medical school, Garrett made national news for taking quick action after stumbling onto this unfolding drama. Come on, buddy, don't jump! The police were there, they had the bridge blocked off. Oh! While emergency crews stood on the shore in shock, Garrett, a skilled athlete and certified lifeguard, didn't hesitate to jump in. There's somebody out there coming. I had to dive and found him on the bottom of the river and uh, brought him up. He wasn't breathing, and so I started doing mouth to mouth. His dramatic rescue attempt, captured on camera, propelled him into the national spotlight with appearances on Dateline and Oprah. I just did what I was trained to do. You know, I was somebody that wanted to make a difference. That's why he chose to become a doctor. Garrett was living his dream, building a successful practice as an orthopedic surgeon, when in a blink, that life ended after an accidental fall from a balcony. I was getting up and I turned, and when I turned, my vertebrae shifted. Well, that happened and it literally was like someone just turned off my legs. The injury left him paralyzed. He lost a lot. I'm an active person, big into surfing, windsurfing, running on a beach. My self-esteem is, is like zero. I feel like I'm in a hole. A year later, he went back to go to work. And they said, well, you don't have a job. You're not going to be able to get around in the, the examining room. And that's what these students are hoping to change. You ready? I mean, this is a man who's gone through so much schooling, and for all that to kind of be taken away, we want to give him a chance to bring that back. This team devoted their senior project to creating a device that would allow Dr. Couples to navigate an operating room again. If you're an able-bodied surgeon um, and you need to move left, you don't have to back up and diagonally kind of do the parallel park thing. You just take a step left. That's what we wanted to emulate as close as possible. It's such a complicated project. Too complicated to build alone. Even as a team, it was a challenge. Nothing that I've done, at least, has been to this scope. I originally started on the circuitry side of the project. I do a lot of the engineering design. I worked on the base. And there is something special about all the five of them. The energy, the enthusiasm, the commitment. They called their invention SPOT standing paraplegic omnidirectional transport. You move the joystick, it sends commands to the controller to get forward movement, diagonal movement, sideways movement. We're working on uh, something that he would use every single day to do his job. The question is, will it really work? That's what Dr. Couples is here to find out. Did you want to just have me get in and just, just go from there? You know, it's the first time we've met him in person and actually got him on the device. All they care about is 
trying to, to, to get me back into something that I dreamt about since I was a, a, a kid. Though the team has worked on Spot for a year, Dr. Couples is only in town for two days to test the device. Basically, you just start pumping yourself up. And we really just want to get him back up on his feet. It's an amazing feeling to have people want to help you. Okay, so now the uh, knee. And it's just exciting to see that the device that was just on paper, that was just in our heads, is uh, it's real. I think we have a good shot at, at making it work. Yeah, you're probably good there. Okay. Early in the process, the students are encouraged. As Spot proves, it can help Dr. Couples stand. I haven't been this high <laughs> a long time. Wow, what well, was so much different up here? That's the first time I've seen him stand up in three years. I took a picture and sent it on to his mom. We have not seen him on his two feet since the accident. But the victory is short-lived. If I let go, I'm going, for, I'm going forward. Gotcha. You understand? Dr. Couples doesn't feel secure. I don't have any balance at, at the top. We're having to make some modifications. And Spot has started making an unexplained noise. It's the belt. I was pretty nervous. With so much left to do, and Dr. Couples only in town for one more day, everyone feels the crunch. It's pretty much just try and keep your cool. I'm wanting to fall forward. A victory dinner is canceled, as the students realize they'll need to keep working into the night. We gotta make this right, we gotta do it correctly. What exactly did you do to the backs? Hopefully we can make enough improvements. My center of gravity seems like it's it's out in front of me. What are solutions that we can come up with? Good question. And there's not much time to find the answer. You ready? Yeah. OK. We're, we're... It is the second and final day of testing the spot robot. Dr. Garrett Couples needs to catch an afternoon flight to head home to Delaware. We got a little bit behind in our testing. It wasn't moving like it needed to. I actually feel more stable throwing my arms back like this. Like, forward? Forget it. Really, we should have all expected it because it's something that, if it really would have worked the first time, it would have been kind of shocking. They're anxious to see if the device works better after hours of late-night adjustments. I was able to modify the device in the machine shop. Okay, you want so, his so knees to come So that the rest of him, yes. And the rest will follow. Yes. Okay, it's not perfect, but, like, it's better. And as long as we can keep that momentum going, it's a good sign. Like, I need to grab hold of something and push, push myself back. The clock is ticking, and you can feel the tension. Am I in danger of, of, of breaking any parts of the machine? We're driving as hard as we can to get to that finish line. But once Dr. Couples starts feeling more comfortable, the mood quickly shifts. We actually had them move around and do different tests, spinning around. And the test turns into a game. We actually even drew a maze out of tape on the ground, and he was trying to beat his times. This is what I want for Christmas. When we finally saw that it was doing the type of movement that we designed it to do, I mean, it's one of the biggest natural highs you can get. Still good? Still good, yeah. It is nearly time for the final test. Spot and the team are heading to UW Hospital to see how the robot works in a simulated operating room. Everything these students have committed for the past year hinges on what happens next. We've spent like ridiculous amounts of time on this. And you're constantly thinking about it. I don't want to fail at, at something that's so important. Hey. I want him to be able to use his talents to help other people. And if I can enable it, then that's all I want. As every inventor must, these students now face the moment of truth. I was definitely nervous. <sighs> Once he pulled up to there, he was kind of, you know, back at home where, you know, he's a surgeon, that's where he's comfortable. You have to imagine it's the first time he's been standing like a surgeon in that position for years. I don't think I have the words to describe it. 
That's all he wants to do. Just let me go back to work. And for the first time in a long time, that actually seems possible. There's light at the end of this tunnel. This is just amazing. It's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I expected maybe to be able to, to, to do, you know, some things, but it's just hit out of the park, complete home run. True to their mission, they didn't just invent a device, they made a difference, and not only for Dr. Couples. What we've gained in experience is priceless. It really kind of opens your eyes to see how to interact with someone who's been through that kind of level of tragedy. You're not just writing a uh, solution to your homework. One of the reasons we're all biomedical engineers is that we like the idea of helping someone with what you make. I'm really proud of them. Because they mastered the most important lesson. Life is fragile. Things can change. And if you have an opportunity to do something good, this is the time. It's all for a greater purpose to help out another human being. You know, I'll never forget this. It's definitely something I'm going to be proud of for the rest of my life. Thank you very much.